question into the chat box too, just so we have it. <laughs> That's a Joni question. Joni, go with it. <laughs> 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 I am with Joni. And I, I like Cheryl's response. I need hugs. Like, obviously, you can be serious or, you know. <laughs> I love the hugs. <laughs> I like Judy Cohen's The House is a Sanctuary. Yes. So true. For the first couple months, I was missing the road trips big time. My wife was missing my road trips even more. We're now like, you know, six months into it. It's getting kind of comfy. So guys, as you join, we'll start up um, just the questions one more time. You know, what, what was one thing you've learned about yourself during this pandemic and how have you grown from it? I love the yoga classes. Oh, so true. Uh, resilience, that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh. It's about not 402. Should we get started? We'll have people join in as well. But. <laughs> Renee, you want to kick yeah, us off? Let's, let's do it. So it's good to be uh, welcome back, everybody. We took a break for the summertime. It's good to be back together. And we have a fantastic lineup for the rest of the Hey, Kristen, yes. We have a great lineup for the uh, rest of the fall. So uh, today we have uh, Michael Connor, uh, VP of Glo uh, Business Development, uh, and Doug Douglas Day, who's a VP of Global Marketing, both with the Full Circle Group. They need no introduction, really, as we know them. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to uh, Mike and Doug and uh, take it away. We have, awesome. we have a climbing agenda. Well, what they'll be talking about really is how do you do this work in a virtual environment? Whether it's doing a debrief, a group debrief, individual debrief, working with a virtual mat, it's all things virtual, right, that you want to know to make it a great experience for yourself and the client. So that's the topic. With that, Mike and Doug, it's all yours. Awesome, awesome. We're so glad to have you guys. And it's just really great to see some familiar faces Others of you are new. It's uh, really, really nice. I'm very uh, pleased to introduce my co-leader, Douglas Day, out of Salt Lake City. Hello. Doug's our global director of marketing, uh, just a top shelf guy. So you, if you don't know Doug, you know the results of his remarkable team. Anything that looks like materials, whether it's a mat or a brochure or materials or a feedback report, it comes out of his group. They do all of our branding, so all the PowerPoints, anything you've seen on TLC Go, all the certification stuff. Um, his, his next big, huge claim to fame, perhaps out in the next week or so, we're launching a really sizably different and better website that will be out, you know, uh, the next couple of weeks. So Doug is extraordinary uh, in many ways. So it's good to have you here. Thanks. Glad uh, to be. Today, he will be playing the role of tech facilitator. We'll be talking a little bit about what that role is. But we're really glad to have all of you here. And um, I was kind of chuckling. Uh, it's a little ironic that I'm sitting here kind of leading a session on virtual. Uh, I do it all the time, and yet I'm not the best when it comes to technology. So none of this could happen without Doug and the 15 minutes prior prep we did before you all logged in. So he'll be driving the slideshow, and I'm going to just be saying next, next, next. So Doug, if you just pass it on to the slide deck, please. Perfect. Are we all launched there? Yeah, can you see it? Yeah. Do we have a full screen there? Uh, I can put it to full screen. Give me one sec. That better? Awesome, thank you. So uh, welcome. Uh, everything we do at the Leadership Circle is in support of our purpose statement. You are all certified at one point, so you've seen it. We exist to evolve the conscious practice of leadership. We do that to steward the planet, and we do that to awaken in all of us our inherent unity 
this is the message that got me excited about joining this organization 10 years ago. And I find it very interesting and somewhat ironic how it's so relevant today more than it was in whatever the complexities of the world were, was you know, 10 years ago. So we're glad to have you all here. Uh, next, please. Uh, I've been told we can't talk about unprecedented times. People are getting tired of that label, but this is our new normal. And so uh, Jim Halpert had a point of saying, so what we plan to do today is share with you some best practices in doing our work. We're gonna focus on a couple of key themes. One is the debriefing and the coaching. And secondly, how to do it with group sessions. Part of that will include the leadership circle met. Um, to warm us up though, and Deirdre, you, used to, you did this as a best practice while people were joining in, you got a question started as a prompt in the chat room. But we're also going to take about seven minutes and just go into breakout rooms. And Doug's gonna assign you randomly. And the prompt is, the world needs us now. What's being asked of you these days? We'll see you in seven minutes. Oh, sorry, we're doing that right now. Hang on. This is why you need a tech facilitator who's ready. Okay. And that's how you pivot. <laughs> Pivoting. <laughs> yeah, the more missteps we show, the better we're going to give them a confidence that we don't have to get it right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. See you in seven minutes. David. Awesome all around guy. So, um, can't tell, are we all back together? We should be, yes. Okay, Doug, if we could, uh, well, let's just say for a moment, uh, you all went into breakouts. The prompt was what's being asked of you these days. Let's just hear from a couple people. What were some of the uh, unique insights you might have heard from the, the session with some of your peers? You want to unmute and just share a thought or two? I'll, I'll, I'll dive in. I think a common theme in our group was um, really help, helping clients in terms of providing perspective, staying out of the reactive, and and um, the in, a lot more intensity of demand, uh, not just around business issues, but the broader, whether it's COVID or racial systemic injustice and um, broader social issues that our clients are all facing. And just really being there and present for them in a way that provides a larger kind of container of perspective. That's great. One or two others. Michael, I was about leading from home uh, in the face of a decreasing sense of connection and coherence. Uh, maybe perhaps with themselves and certainly within their teams. I wanted to share, Michael, I appreciated your comment about giving our clients permission to be in the reactive and to find that, that sense of safety, not to stay there, right, but to really reap the benefits of that um, permission to just be human, right? Exactly. And I remember uh, a big old ask of the world. The world was asking me and my family to stay sheltered in place for 14 days. You remember when that's what the ask was? 14 days sheltered? It's not like 180 days. And there's an interesting coincidence. Uh, you'll see Shri down there. Say hi, Shri. Uh, one of the very first people I spoke to when it got bigger than 14 days was Shri. And Shri, just a little bit about your story. Uh, a lot of your family plans had abruptly come to a change and you were painting a picture about your wife's working over there and the three kids are working these different places all within view and you're all trying to coexist on five different devices and that's just another one of those things just all the distractions while also being asked to just be at our very very best so um, I've always felt no matter how I look at this world as being complex in its own way or VUCA I've always known that the force of people like us this whole community can always be bigger than the forces before us so it's with that that Doug and I are really, really pleased to be joining all of you. So Doug, with that, if we could show the screen. Um, we're gonna just talk about some best practices in doing this work. 
And please know, uh, we are not expert in this, but we've been doing it a long time. We're gonna create a forum for other people to share things as well. But our thought is we wanna share just a few best practices around the debriefing and the coaching, some other things we've learned about facilitating group sessions, uh, and specifically Matt's gonna, or I'm sorry, um, Doug is gonna showcase a few different technologies, including how to use the virtual leadership circle mat. Um, all of this is recorded and this entire deck will be available posted on the groups.io site. So uh, you all can just participate fully. So Doug, if we can go forward. The first is really pretty fundamental, but I've been doing this a long time and I've been doing a lot of coaching people on how to do this, um, doing the, the debrief. It's the exact same experience as you've always done. The only difference is it's on a Zoom or some sort of virtual platform and it requires a little bit of orchestration. Um, prior to COVID, there was always a big question in the community where half the people took the perspective of let's send the feedback reports in advance so they can have some time to spend with their feedback before we meet with them. There's another side which I used to lean towards, let's be with them and show them the feedback report in the session when we're there with them so we can kind of manage where their eyes goes and we can be prepared to kind of help them not overthink what they think they're seeing in the feedback report. Uh, both of those options are still available, but more and more, it's more prudent or practical to have the feedback report sent to them in advance. And Doug, if you could just go to the next slide briefly. Uh, and again, this is going to be available in the deck, but just, to, you know, nothing magical here, but simply scheduling a Zoom call or a phone call, and you'll offer them just a confirmation of the meeting you have scheduled, where you attach three things, the two feedback reports, as well as the profile interpretation manual. And then that's everything that you need. That and screen sharing is everything you need. And then you just give them some encouragement to do some preparation before they meet with you. So back to the previous slide, Doug. So with that, one of the key elements we need to pay attention to with this forum is making sure they have some sort of orientation. So if they're looking at their feedback report and they're not meeting with you till tomorrow, really making sure that they don't overread or misread, especially around the reactive energy. So an orientation of the framework is really fundamental before you put feedback reports in front of anybody. Putting special attention on, let's make sure that you're not misreading the reactive tendencies. Don't, don't think reactive means bad. You know, everything in the leadership circle is about where you are from a perspective of people who give you feedback, but there's nothing in your report that is ever gonna say there's a problem that needs to be fixed. And just make sure people are really clear on that. So if they are looking at reactive energy on the graph, they're not gonna misinterpret it as areas where they're messing up. Uh, and then finally, uh, just as a, a really good practice is, I will typically then have their feedback reports up in the Zoom meeting and I will do the screen sharing of their reports so we can go to the places quickly and I can kind of guide them where they need to go. So those are, are basically the fundamental uh, summary points. Let me just pause and see uh, those of you who have also been doing this virtually, what else uh, would be helpful to this conversation? about how to do a debrief virtually. Hey Mike, I have a question, it's Abby. Um, the idea of doing the orientation beforehand, before sending the report means that we're getting together with them, let's say on Zoom, doing the orientation and then following up. So that email that you showed is a follow-up to having done the orientation. Uh, thank you, uh, that is one example, yes. That's not always possible. The alternative would be just some sort of email. I will be sending your feedback reports. You'll be receiving them on Wednesday. Attached as a copy of a brochure just to get you introduced to the model. Oh. Please make sure you, you see this. So the orientation might be in a written email. But you just want to make sure that they just get that message one way or another. Mike, um, would it be helpful here to share? We've got some amazing orientation uh, materials, and many of them are brand new inside of TLC Go. Uh, we've got some new videos around the orientation, you know, the creative versus reactive, and then also the task versus relationship that Betsy Leatherman, our president, has done. A um, number of things. Uh, you may have heard TLC Go is getting a, a facelift, so they're even going to be easier to find in about a week or so. Um, so go ahead and use those uh, materials to your advantage. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, in response to Abby's question, but it's a good one, I should have stated this some sort of giving them an explanation about what to expect in their feedback report and don't let them misread the reactive tendencies is really what you want to make sure they get. 
And so to Doug's point, there's all sorts of good resources, videos, uh, white papers, and so forth about how to prepare for your debrief. Finally, there will be the occasion where I'm going to look at the feedback report before I launch any of this, and I'm going to see something that might give me pause. If the self scores are much higher than the other scores, or if there's some content in the written comments that seems like it could be a rather abrasive, I might switch my tune and instead kind of plan for, I'm going to walk you through this one step at a time so I could be there with you. So other comments or questions to how to do a virtual debrief. Hey, Mike. Um, one thing that I've been doing instead of screen sharing is suggesting that they print it out for themselves. And then, and then we both have it printed out and we can kind of, I can point them to places on their piece, piece of paper. I don't know how that might compare with actual screen sharing, but I, I tend to feel yeah. comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. When they have a question, it might be easier to say, Hey, turn to page six and let's look at those couple of right. statements. So, yeah. And then they can make their own notes easily with a pen and focus on that versus on the screen. Good. Any other thoughts or questions? Hey, Mike. Mike. This is Tim. The, the one thing that I did on these, this recent leadership team that I worked with is, to your point, that this was the first time I did send stuff in advance because um, I felt, to your point, that it was <clears throat> that there was the profiles were not anything that would be too shocking, if you will. Um, but I actually gave them a little bit more direction on how to dive in should they choose to. So I did kind of walk them through a little bit, like start with the comments or the feedback on page 11. So I kind of walked them through what I was going to do um, anyway, so that I just didn't dump the materials on them. And that seemed to work okay. I don't know if, if people really looked at them on this one, but at least I didn't get the comments like, oh, I wish I would have gotten this sooner so that I could have you know, digested it. So I felt like at least I gave them the chance to look at it. Um, I just wanted to share, I don't know how other people are feeling about this, but I, I'm, I, for me, the, um, the virtual debriefs take a little longer. I think leaving enough time, um, there's something about the, the, the space, I think, that, um, that just lends itself to just a little, you know, to, to not being rushed. And I, I think that's, I don't know what others are experiencing. I've been scheduling my debriefs ever since the beginning for two hours. Right. And I find we take the two hours. Exactly. And in addition to the profile manual and the reports, I would also sometimes send the uh, LDP form. And I'll just say, just scan through the comments and we'll do a deeper dive when we get together. And it's always worked beautifully uh, in my experience so far. Right, I agree. And we're in, in, in the room, it's more like 90 minutes for the same, I think. Mm -hmm. I was going to say too, I think part of that is I find I'm having more time up front chatting with clients because I think there's a lot of lift right now. And so I spend time talking to them about just how they're doing. And not that I didn't do that before, but I seem to have a little more spaciousness for that now. Mm -hmm. One of the things, can you guys, can you hear me, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I've been discovering is that the quality of the debrief is really affected positively by even having 15 or 20 minutes to meet them before the whole process starts. Agreed, fully. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I'm finding the practice that Vinay says, I'm now scheduling two hours as a practice, letting people know we may not need all this time, but let's have it if we can. I like to just kind of really warm up, really get a chance to get to know them or really understand their current circumstances. Some of us might think that this is a response to the current circumstances. We actually get a lot of feedback that this is a preferred way. Some people actually feel like they can be just as intimate, but they also get a chance to take their notes. They get a chance to do things you know, outside of the screen view. It's a little easier to, you know, it takes less energy perhaps. So, um, you know, this might be a new normal that might even make a lot of sense. Again, I've been doing it my whole time here. Probably 90% of my debriefs for the last 10 years have been virtual and there really hasn't been an issue. It just requires a little bit of planning up front. So any other closing thoughts before we get into some of the more complex topics? Just a question, Mike. Um, when you're doing your screen sharing, 
Um, are you on two screens so that you are able to continue to see the client or are you on one screen and you're looking at the report and not able to see the client? Uh, there's a combination where we're looking at on one screen, I'm looking at their feedback report with them and I put it on speaker view so the two of us can still see each other's faces. Okay, so you still, yeah, thank you. All right. Hey, Doug, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, let's see. It was the last week of February this year uh, when all of a sudden everything shifted for all of us. We had a leadership circle certification the same three days that all of you went through. It's a very full three days. And we made a decision to shift. And literally in four days, so over a weekend, we made a shift to go with that and we did it virtually. And there's an amazing group of people that turned that all around on a dime. Uh, six or seven months later, we've probably done 10 or 12 of these. I've seen some of you, I've met some of you in our virtual certifications, but we've been getting some really good feedback. And so I talked, Doug and I talked with, you know, some of the different facilitators to pull together some of the best practices. We'll share those with you. In a few experiences, we're gonna actually show them with you as we uh, kind of go through some ideas. I do want to emphasize again, we're not experts, but we have a lot of experience. So we want to open up, uh, the forum up for others to share as well. Uh, starting with the tech facilitator, I don't do any significant conversation bigger than a one-on-one -on -one without a tech facilitator. My buddy Doug is playing that role here today. Uh, but we'll also talk about how to prepare. We'll talk about how to manage energy, timing, backgrounds, some of the Zoom features and so forth. Uh, on that note, uh, Doug is going to be facilitating an activity in a little while. So he's going to be asking in the chat room for the first five volunteers before you say yes. Uh, his activity will probably be at the, the later part of this meeting. So if you plan to be here for the entire session, Doug's going to lift the first five people who put their names with a yes in the chat room for an activity going on here in just a moment. Thank you, Sky. Sharon and a few others keep going. So Doug, while you're managing all that, I'm also gonna ask you to turn to the next slide. If there's a best practice, this is the best of the best of the best. Um, all the work that we do, whether it's virtual uh, group or virtual one-on-one, -on -one, it takes our absolute full attention and then some, as we all know. A tech facilitator is the person who can handle all the miscellaneous other, other stuff, bringing them on as a co-host. And so with that, the co-host can do all sorts of different things. There's some really cool uh, things available on Zoom with polling or whiteboarding or breakout rooms. Um, if you guys are like me, like a lot of technologies, whether it be Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint, I kind of learned my basics and got kind of really comfortable with those. But sometimes it's worthwhile. I might encourage you to go back into Zoom and just look at all the other features. I was looking at it last night in preparation for our call today. I'd forgotten about polling. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done whiteboarding. There's some security features that are different from last time I really paid attention. So just go in and see all that is available and then coordinate with all of that with your tech facilitator prior to going live. Some other things to pay attention to, just simple best practices, but if there's anybody here who's still feeling new to this, letting people know things will be recorded, letting people know the materials will be available and how they will be able to access them. When you're gonna use the chat room, be sure people have an, a knowledge and understanding about when and how that can be used. Something new uh, I recently learned was offering your phone number in advance so if somebody somehow gets lost in a shuffle, they can text and uh, we'll be able to find them. So try and honor the best practice that I just shared. I will be sharing with you now my cell phone number. So if any of you get lost in the shuffle, you can text me at the following number, 704-231. 7805. But there's all sorts of really cool things you could do as far as nonverbals with thumbs ups, applause. You can mute people. It's very, very important. And I have not figured this out completely, but the whole sharing of screens, sharing a co hosting, all those are things you want to coordinate with your tech facilitator before the session starts. I'll make one more com comment here and then I'll uh, get a little broader. I probably am uh, between five and seven Zoom calls every day for the last six months. And I still get challenged with all the different things going on. 
and my preparation gets distracted when I'm busy trying to screen share and such. So the tech facilitator is a really good, uh, really good role to have there for almost anything that you can. Secondly, before you all joined the room, before Deidre and Vinay started letting you all in, the four of us, uh, plus Lee, so Lee and then Doug and myself, Doug and Vinay, we spent 15 minutes just practicing, getting screen sharing set down, making sure the PowerPoint was loaded, making sure we all could see the same view, double checked our agenda, making sure we got it all right. So all those things are best practices. So as we think about a tech facilitator, let me just open up to the group. What else do we know or what questions might you have about the role of a tech facilitator? You guys can unmute and ask questions or you can stick them in the chat box as well. Hey Mike, this is Judy Cohen. I just, hi there. I uh, just wanted to point out one thing that I came across with Zoom recently, which is I have a government client who uses the government version of Zoom and not all uh, features are ac accessible. Yes. Uh, that builds on another thing. Uh, Doug and I oftentimes default to what the client wants to use. So sometimes we're Google, Google Hangout. Sometimes we're in you know, different, different other platforms. There's three or four or five of them. I learned the first time the hard way, you do need to go in and practice. They're all very, very similar, but they're different enough that if you're gonna be getting into a new platform that your client's wanting to use, it's really, really important that you get some practice on it before you do a group session. Thank you for that prompt. Yeah, I have just a comment, um, Mike. Nice to see you. you uh, when you're doing polling and things like that, and depending how intimate the group is with one another, if you're doing a larger group, sometimes it's good to take people's names off, you know, so that if they're just wanting to chime in so that there's some psychological safety, so that people can be anonymous in providing their input and you don't necessarily have to know who is giving it. I mean, there's some points obviously in a group facilitation, you wanna know who's sharing and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes if you really wanna just get the pulse of what's going on and you don't wanna have personally identifiable information that your tech facilitator can help you with that. Yep. Uh, Doug shared some new security protocols with me in preparation for this meeting. I didn't realize, but you can actually go in and disable names. You can allow people to change names, all sorts of things you can do now. Thank you for that, Linda. Anything else on tech facilitation? Uh, Linda, there was a follow-up question on that too. Just do you mean turn off the names in chat? How do you mean turn off the names? Yeah, turn off the, well, not, not the chat, right? It's, it's like, yes, turn off the names in the chat. If you're asking people a question, you want them to give the, give the responses in the chat, right? But also when you're, when you're polling or you're asking people to raise, to raise a hand that, um, that they don't, um, aren't, aren't identifiable so that you're getting some data without having to have it attached to a person. Thank you for that. Doug, if we could go back to the, um, uh, the next slide, the one after the screenshot of, uh, of a Zoom room with the faces. Next one, please. Great. Uh, a few other things to talk through as group session best practices. We've talked about the role of the tech facilitator. Can't stress enough the role of the team preparation. Uh, energy management. Um, you can imagine the challenge we had as an organization. You've all been through our three-day certification. It's a very aggressive three-day certification. And we knew that energy management and content condensing was gonna be important. We brought it down 20% the first couple of sessions and then we brought it down another 10 or 15%. So crisper, more direct, less anecdotal, just really get to the point you need to make. And while there's all sorts of other things you'd wanna share, et cetera, for purposes of energy management, especially if you're at a multi-hour or an all-day program, Tim Sloan, last time I saw you, we were in three back-to-back -back days, if you remember. Uh, we, are, we are very strongly encouraging condensing of content knowing that sometimes the best in the service of everything is to create more space for breaks, timing, group discussions, and breakouts. Comments or questions on condensing content, best practices on timing or breaks? Hey, Michael, I do have one on that. I found with the two virtual workshops that I've done recently, that, that setup up front I'm noticing is where I really condense. So, so sometimes I know for me, it's like 
going over the agenda and ground rules and all that stuff. Pretty soon I'm going, wow, that's taking like, you know, depending on the group, it's taking 15, 20, 25 minutes. I'm condensing that part because I don't want to lose people in that, in that beginning. So still holding true to the, the value of introductions and ground rules and stuff, but really trying to move through that quicker. Excellent. Thank you. To that point, probably the one thing I miss, well, one of the things I miss a lot about the face-to-face, -face, the leadership circle certification is used to put a lot of energy towards check-ins and check-outs around the circle. Each of those could be an hour. That doesn't work in a virtual environment. We uh, are more selective in when we use them. We are tighter. Um, we're doing things such as, hey, you know, hear from everybody one or two words to describe how you're feeling right now. Or if we want something a little bit more uh, intentional or purposeful, we might do a check out with the 20 of you, we're gonna put you into five different breakouts of four. Just things like that to manage timing and breaks and condense the content. It's probably the biggest challenge you have to think about if you're doing multi-hour or multi-day sessions. So maybe that's all in there. Any other comments or questions about timing, breaks, energy management? Rosanna's got one about timing. How often, Rosanna Stanton, how often and how long for breaks? We have an official point of view, but let's hear from everybody. What, what are your thoughts? We've been hearing 10 minutes every hour. Yeah, I've been doing every hour. Just a stretch, bio break, get yourself repurposed. Anybody yeah. have any different thoughts on that? My wife does a lot of Zoom meetings in a public school environment. And I was kind of talking through some of the ideas in preparation last night. And she reminded me, not everybody needs to step away from it all for a break. Some people want to do something else. They don't need to refresh their tea. So what she'll do is she's going to offer a variety of different activities. And we're going to take a pause for 10 minutes. Here's two or three things you might want to do. Um, or not do, you know, step away, but you might want to journal, you might want to reflect, you might want to chat with somebody in the chat room in a private chat. There's all sorts of things you could offer because different people energize in different ways. Uh, so Kirsten Olson brings up a really good point, ironically, uh, a coach to my wife that I just made mention of, um, just uh, giving people a chance to take their eyes off the screen for a while, just do something that's not looking at the Zoom screen. Thank you for that, Kirsten. And Michael, um, I apologize for not the video today, but one of the things that I find is I can go 90 minutes without a break with a group if, if it's highly interactive. I'm finding that doing small groups of three has just been magical. Awesome. Um, regardless of the size of the group I'm working with, whether it's 12 or whether it's 150, when I put them into groups of three and I do it often, they are so energized, they just want to keep going. And I find they're more energized by being able to talk to one another than if I gave them a 10 minute break. Sure. So I'm, you know, I'm just learning. I'm learning, learning every day as I do this. Love it. We all are. That's a great one, Joan. Thank you. And with that, that's another thing that we learned as well. Not only are we condensing content, really the better way to say it, we're condensing lecture. Uh, we could lecture for a whole hour on the stages of adult development, and that's not a good idea. So we're going to do like the 10-minute overview, and then we're going to give people a prompt and put them into, you know, smaller group discussions to kind of learn from it what they want, knowing that we will then follow up for those that want more depth. We're gonna, we have an attached article that we'll be sending everybody. That would be another illustration. So other things. Um, let's talk about Zoom backgrounds. Uh, what we see and let's let's just kind of hear from you guys. It's unbelievable to everybody how the level of professionalism has shifted. I've seen people in their bedrooms. I've seen people's spouses in their bedrooms. I've seen people's dresser drawers open in the background and people talk about what they see in each other's Zoom backgrounds. So what are some lessons learned? What do we know about our Zoom backgrounds as a best practice? Unmute if you have any anecdotes or suggestions or advice. 
Hey, Mike, this is Ray. I've heard a couple of things, right? One is um, many of the people are kind of tired of um, fake backgrounds, right? They're like, you know, and, and I also hear people saying, let's just keep it real. Like, why would you be, uh, you know, be more authentic? Um, on the other hand, some people are also saying we're kind of tired of being on video all the time. It's just like, uh, we don't need to be showing our faces. So it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of getting mixed um, kind of signals. Yeah, what do people think? Any, any thoughts from the, from the group here? I, I can uh, comment on that. And I, I do think that some kind of a background, being mindful of how you're showing up uh, matters, I think. But that could be anything. And, and I, I think uh, demonstrating empathy for what our clients are going through and, and our colleagues are going through that, you know, they're, they're, they're cats and dogs that climb up or somebody's lovely child that comes by. And I, I think showing empathy and, and embracing that is a good thing too. At the same time, I've heard from some of my clients that are, who are either back in their offices um, who, who really speak to the, their own desire to show up in a different way and want to be in that space and are decked out in a whole different way than my t-shirt. And I get that too. So it's a, it's a very personal thing, but I think the, 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 the message to me is about being mindful, being aware that how you are showing up in this space and being comfortable with that, whatever that space is and whatever this looks like. This is Nancy. I think a, another consideration is really who you're working with in a group. So if you have people with very different levels working together in a group and you have, um, particularly if you have different levels of wealth or you have different um, types of home environments, that may be a circumstance where you may want to consider asking everyone to have um, a uh, artificial background so that you kind of level the playing field. So it, it is that matter of just being aware of who you're working with and what the issues might be in that group. Mm -hmm. Good. Michael, the other thing I would offer is humor is always great. Um, and so sometimes the backgrounds can offer a little humor if anybody likes to watch Schitt's Creek, the TV show. I have a, I have the creek on my background sometimes and that gets a laugh. Or we have a theme, put a background up of your favorite vacation place or the, the trip you wish you were making or something that gives people an opportunity to connect. So you can make them work for you a little bit, I think. Exactly. I think the whole point is, uh, you know, uh, be personal, make it, uh, what you want to make it, honor those that maybe want to see it a different way. Uh, but you know, if we could just work towards minimizing distractions sometimes. I was doing a debrief a couple weeks ago with a guy that had a whole Star Trek, Star Trek theme behind him. He was a scientist with Roche and he hadn't looked at his feedback reports and it was a rather reactive piece and it was just really distracting for me. <laughs> to, you know, but if it was fine for him, it was fine for me. But you know, just, just you know, be knowledgeable and practice. Uh, on that note, there's no strong point of view that we're going to take on it, but a lot of people have a lot to say about it. In the chat room, I put a message, a link to everybody that kind of talked about um, background mistakes, where it just sort of shows examples of when people had a mistake, you know, background that was too this or too that, and then how it turned out, you know, after a little bit of direction giving and so forth. So just be mindful about the background. I think the one thing that I want to build on what Shri was saying about uh, Zoom fatigue, you get tired. And this is not connected to the background, but I've been intentionally switching back to phone sometimes. I got into the habit of every meeting, just make a Zoom session, an autopilot. I'm going back saying, let's just do something by old phone. And some of the clients will be walking around, they're going to walk in the park or walk around their house. And we're having these conversations and without a video, it's been very refreshing actually. So I, I, forgot, about, I, I forgot about the phone for a while. I said, like, wait a minute, this thing exists, let's use it. And especially if you're in a position where you can actually have a, a walk around the block or through the park while you're doing it, that's great. Yeah. So I'm not taking a judgment or even a stand on any of these other than people are paying attention to backgrounds and depending on the kind of conversation you're having, you know, whatever you could do to minimize inequity, minimize distraction, 
you know, just kind of just, just know it's something that people like to talk a lot about. All right. Um, I will tell you, and I, we all found this humorous, there was a guy a couple months ago who went through the entire three-day certification in bed. <laughs> and that was all fine, but it's like, wow, it kind of threw a couple of us for a curve for a little bit. So take it for what it's worth. Doug, if we go back to the screen, another best practice, I kind of pulled together what I hope you'll think is an illustrative example. I'm going to the next slide. When you have breaks, sometimes it's good just to put an interesting visual up that's different than you know, uh, pausing your, your or the muting and stopping your screen share, just something else, maybe as a, as a, a thought prompter or something. You're know, just something stimulating, maybe relevant to the topic, maybe not. Uh, in this case, I was trying to emphasize soothing. So things like that are, are another ways to do it. Um, what we're now going to do is, Doug, I'm going to ask you if you'll kind of launch into, there you go. Why don't you talk to us about Mural? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm probably going to be talking to experts on Mural who are better than uh, myself. I'm sure I know a lot of coaches are using Mural these days, maybe just by a show of hands. Is, have, who has heard of or used Mural? Okay, quite a few. So, yeah, um, I'll just go very quickly over it uh, in that case, just for those who may not have seen it. Uh, Mural is Super cool. Basically, it's a whiteboard um, that you can interact. Think of it as like Google uh, Slides or any of the Google interactive um, software pieces that uh, where we can all be on the same platform at the same time. Um, but this brings it really focused towards team building, uh, coaching, um, really everything that each one of you are doing with your clients and your teams every day. Um, this is one that I loved. Uh, we have so many people on the call and we're short on time today. If we had more time, I was going to jump into it. But this is just a selfie sketch icebreaker. Um, you know, you're starting a, a, a group session and you want to take 10 minutes at the beginning to kind of get everybody loosened up a little bit. This is really fun where you can honestly dive in and uh, create a little sketch of yourself. Um, and you put them in teams or have everybody do it themselves and you can come on here and draw, you know, draw your face, whatever, and then pull up, uh, oh, I'm still drawing, um, you know, pull up little uh, decals, do whatever you want to do, right? Um, and this is one of hundreds of templates that they have. You can create your own templates. Uh, you can do really very robust um, group sessions with these where everybody can interact. People can be designing, drawing, uh, pulling out stickies, writing notes. You know, if I want to say this drawing is horrible, you know, whatever. Um, all of this very easily. It, it's, it's all about group work together uh, on one platform, which is really nice. We're actually uh, Tyson Andrus, uh, who many of you know, is actually working on creating a, a, the next version of the virtual mat on uh, Mural uh, because it offers some things that uh, even Google Slides doesn't. Uh, just very easy platform for people to use together. Uh, are there, Mike, you're on mute. I was gonna say, uh, it might be helpful for those who have used it because we have so many. Maybe you could share some of the things you use it for or some of the best tips and tricks that you've all found. When I do a lot of group facilitation and we are doing like rapid brainstorming where in person I would typically use stickies, I use Mural as a way of creating clusters and really grouping ideas and, and seeing commonalities and patterns and trends. I've, I've, that's probably the most common way that I've been using it. Love that, works perfect for that. I actually created a Johari window on Mural and you can cut and paste a person's photo. So I put the photo there and then uh, you can have a Johari window for each person in the, in the team or the group. Wow, great idea. 
Kathy shared, I've done mission, vision, values, and strategic planning, uh, goal priorita prioritization, SWOT analysis. They actually have a SWOT analysis template in there that's ready to go, easy to use. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Kathy. I just took a moment to kind of review the chat room. Boy, there's a lot of awesome stuff here. So part of the recording, Doug, if I know this correctly, is we can uh, capture all of this group chat in the recording. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of good wisdom in here. So that's really, really cool. Um, the final thought I have before we kind of switch into the next activity is not a technology-enabled solution. And Deirdre and Vinay, I'm going to set you guys up here. Uh, sometimes it's just being extra thoughtful in how you do your preparation. So Deidre and Vinay, you were recently doing an all-day session at the Federal Reserve Bank, and you put together some care packages. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you did there? Vinay, you want to start? Uh, uh, Deidre, you did so much of the heavy lifting on that one. I think I'm gonna let you have the honor on that one, Deidre. I got the credit just tied to Deidre on that, so Deidre, take it away. <laughs> Vinay, I take plenty of credit from you, so I'm gonna call us even. <laughs> Um, so Vinay and I did a, a full day promise of leadership um, at a large federal government institution and we were trying to figure out they were they're a very conservative organization and they were really um, really not happy about doing a whole day on on a video and we we had a technical facilitator from the bank and they actually made us do it through um, Webex meetings and we had some pieces of teams. It was a crazy hot mess of technology that actually did end up working, but nobody was looking forward to it. And everyone was like, we're tired of this. So Vinay and I were trying to brainstorm and say, what could we do? Um, one of the things that we did, we sent out care packages. So we just got the, the priority boxes from the post office and stuffed them with snacks, like everything you can think of, tea bags, um, instant coffee, things for water, you know, popcorn, everything we could think of and just sent them all out of bags and wrote on the boxes, you know, do not open until the morning of this, just to have fun really, just to give them something that was fun. And the second thing we did is we worked with um, the full circle group and we bought for each of the participants, we only had 11, so it wasn't a huge group. We bought a pack of the vision cards and we bought one of the tabletop LCP mats. So we also sent that out with the Promise of Leadership booklet and we had them do some pre-work on it. And then we actually had them in one of the breakout rooms get on their little tiny mat, which was about that big, I think, um, and play around on it. And it really was um, way more valuable than I think I would have guessed it could have been. So, Vinay, you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, and I think to that, we did a lot of preparation ahead of time as a group uh, with, it, with their tech folks uh, making sure the day goes smoothly. And we did very little presentation in terms of lecturing of content, very, very brief moments of like five minutes or so or seven minutes of lecturing. But most of it was a lot of breakout room, breakout um, conversations. And the day went touch wood really well. And we got one, two really nice comments under the day. I think we were all pleasantly surprised how well, well it went. Uh, even with different technologies that we used, it was a great day actually. That's awesome. You know, you're going to, when you have a group of 11, you're going to have somebody in that room who is not looking forward to an all day Zoom meeting talking about my leadership and to then have a care package that's so thoughtfully put together from the facilitators. It's just a really nice touch. So a great example of a best practice. Is there anybody else? Uh, we're going to switch to a, a different thing here in a moment. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share as far as lessons that they've learned? whether it's the one-on-one -on -one debrief or a group uh, experience in the virtual platform. Mike, I was just gonna share, I'm just looking at like Maureen and Judy, some of the questions around some of the technical aspects of like, you know, the mural platform or even the virtual mat. You know, for a lot of these uh, folks who get on uh, to these calls, whether it's coaches, whether it's clients, anybody, you know, there can often be a little bit of a learning curve for most of these. And, and there's learning curves for us too. Um, you know, these are all new platforms. Mural, I don't even know. I think it may be two years old. Uh, same with Zoom. Zoom's about four years old now. These are brand new platforms. Um, 
and, and there is that learning curve. So it is important if you're going to use them, A, to make sure that you are fully up to speed and then B, to really give your time, your clients the time to get in, move around, understand. Uh, just going back to, you know, that 90 minute debrief becomes a two hour debrief. Similarly, when you're using, you know, Mural or the virtual mat, you're gonna, anytime we've gotten on the virtual mat with a group of people, we spent five minutes talking about how to make it work. And, you know, uh, it, it just, it just takes that time. Thank you for that. Any other thoughts? A lot of us have experience in this new space. Anything else we've learned along the way, guys? Well, Please. for one other thing out, Mike. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm a, I'm a low tech girl. I'm not going to lie. And I, I, at the beginning of the, um, pandemic, I participated in lots of online learning around, you know, virtual and much of it is wonderful. But I, you know, they also said two things. One is, you know, be prepared to go low tech if the high tech doesn't work, you know, what's your backup. And, um, one of the backups I did one day was just, um, I took notes. They, they were in a discussion and I took notes and I shared my screen. I literally was in Microsoft Word and I just was capturing the notes of the group conversation much like I would if I were having a, at a flip chart. And then I said, these are going to be messy, just like they would be if they were on a flip chart. But for your breakouts, I'm going to email them to you. And I just saved the doc. I said, give me five minutes. We took a break. And while they were breaking, I emailed everybody the documents so that they had them for the breakout. And it just, it was this very simple way for them to, I said, if we were in a room together, these would be all around the walls and you'd be looking at them. And so they're going to be messy. But, uh, and it was also sort of a real human thing too, which was like, this isn't pretty and polished and I don't know, but, but they got what they needed and they had it in front of them so they could do that in their breakouts. And it was just a nice, like I said, very low tech uh, way to sort of emulate what happens in the room. Awesome. Any other uh, ideas that we haven't touched on today? The, the other day I was in a, a group with someone and uh, Joni taking off on what you said. And um, this guy just turned around and he literally wrote on a whiteboard behind him. And it was so effective. It's, it, it was, it was um, you know, something I didn't expect. And because it was, it was low tech, but it was, it, 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 it was very impactful. We literally turned around and, and wrote some stuff here that you could, I mean, in big letters that you could actually see. And uh, it, it made me think, I, I really want to try that. Yeah, me too. It like changes it up. And, it, and, and I think part of the, the impact in, in the virtual space is just that idea of changing it up, trying different things, trying, you know, hitting people in, in various learning modes and, and just being creative in that way. So... I'm on my phone, but I totally agree with you. So this is my little flip chart here, and it's better than the regular whiteboard and the computer for sure. Love it. Hey, uh, Doug, if we could go back to the uh, screen. And Joni, you would think that we planned this. I believe your comment spoke to messy flip charts. Go to the next slide. <sighs> That piece of art, Deirdre, I wonder if you recognize this. <laughs> you and I were with Bob Anderson in Princeton, New Jersey a couple of years ago, and he was giving us a deep dive of the stages of adult development. And the session was all done. I was just looking at that thing like, like every conversation with Bob Anderson, I'm completely confused and overwhelmed. And I took a picture of it. I just think it's brilliant. To me, that's beautiful. And it's Bob at his very, very best. So. <laughs> Jody, just one of those illustrations of a messy flip chart. But with that, uh, kind of the final thoughts before we kind of switch into the third and final topic, um, and it, it touches on the low tech. Let's remember that the overall goal here is to support a leader or a group in developing themselves, and that the skills that all of us, all of you have, to listen, to empathize, to give your undivided attention, to pause, to love, to hold accountable, all of that continues to be more important than the technology and has always been more important than even the leadership circle feedback reports. So with all that, I always give myself the space to not have the technology figured out, 
I give myself grace if I'm talking and they tell me I'm on mute or if I can't share my screen, just kind of roll with it. Because the real point is here to, to meet and have an intimate dialogue with the groups you're serving. So with that, Doug, um, I'm gonna ask you to uh, enter into the next activity. Perfect. Uh, sorry. Talking about grace, right? We planned it that way. Here we go. Uh, just want to make sure we're on the same page, Mike. You're going to do the word cloud. Mentimeter? Or you want to go to the graph? Uh, the um, word cloud. Yep. Ah, perfect. Okay. So another uh, software really quick, really quickly, uh, Mentimeter is great. I'm sure many of you have uh, heard of this. So we're just going to do a very quick word cloud. Um, let me grab the link. I have way too many things open right now. Here's where we're going to ask everybody to go and just answer the question. And please use this password. Mike, you're on mute. Doug, do we still have more coming in? Looks like we're about 31 respondents, so that might be about everybody. Doug, if you wouldn't mind just sort of sharing with them, you know, the, the scenarios where we've been using this uh, with some of the sessions that we do. Yeah, absolutely. So we've used this uh, not only with clients uh, on some of the bigger uh, engagements that we've done with larger groups, um, you know, asking questions similar to this, this, this exact question, you know, pops up quite a bit. What are some of the, the complexity that you're facing as a leader in your organization or in your team? We've also used it uh, in certifications and, you know, and much of the work we're doing uh, with coaches throughout. Um, it's actually a pretty cool uh, little uh, piece of software. You know, we just had, actually I'm looking, we have 46 people on here. We, we took a minute and a half of silence to really dig in and think about this question. And, and you know, you're able to watch as these words kind of beautifully come up in a, in a very nice visual and uh, see what we're, what we're all feeling. 
Thank you, Doug. Hey, I'm going uh, to kind of get ready to take the, the final pivot. I'll give you a moment, Doug, if you'll uh, move to the next slide. And then uh, do you have your five volunteers already set up? I do. And I'm actually going to, we're going we're gonna to throw a little curveball, but yeah. Okay. If I, we could just sort of queue up the next slide. Um, and in doing so, we've demonstrated just a couple of the technologies. This last activity we've done, I mentioned earlier, well, it's a common practice to do check-ins or check-outs as part of our certification experience. This is a kind of an alternative to one of the checkouts as a time saver, but still a chance to give the group a chance to reflect and share some of their thoughts. So, um, you know, before we uh, move to the next piece, is there anything else from the group, any other technology? I'm seeing things in the chat room, but I can't keep up with it. Other technologies that seem to play really well with this work that we're all doing. This, this Alexis, I'm going to type in the a link to um, Brian Tarallo. He is, um, many of you might know him. He's a great facilitator and um, has done a lot virtually. And um, he, I worked with him. I'm doing a facilitation on Wednesday. And I worked with him to set up, a, you know, ideas for my facilitation. So, you know, uh, it's like an hour and a half is what he schedules and um you just walk through your slides and he looks at your zoom settings to make sure they're all okay and everything so um i'm gonna put in his uh his information in the in the chat and alexis just so i heard it right is he a person that will co-facilitate with you or is he somebody that gives you some best practices and helping you be your very best uh the best practices i don't i mean he i'm sure he would co-facilitate but i'm guessing he's pretty busy right now himself he just gives the guidance to get you off on a good footing i i mean i'm sure if you asked him if he would want to co-facilitate he'd be happy to do that um but for me what i was looking for is okay i'm going to do this on zoom how to give me some ideas on i want to do where do you stand but i want to stay in zoom so we did it on whiteboard or how i want to do breakout groups and then have everyone back in the room and to your point, time is of the essence. So how do we do that efficiently to get all the voices back in the room um, more than just the chat? So um, anyway, that it was really helpful to me. Love yeah, it. I was gonna say just for Brian too, he does, he will actually facilitate meetings for you. And he is, he is fabulous. He does, he does mural, he does, he actually presents a lot with Ray Ringel, who a lot of people on this call probably know but you can actually hire him to run meetings for you as well. And he's a brilliant graphic facilitator. Love that. Okay, awesome. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm gonna brace ourselves for that curve that Doug has promised us is coming, but to, to make the transition, um, Doug, if we could just uh, pull up that leadership slide. I'm still amazed with uh, the world that we live in, how you're with 20 people in a room and you ask people to raise their hand if they're leaders and only three of the 20 raise their hands, but all of us are leaders, even if you're leading uh, homeschooling in your dining room, or if you're active in your church, or if you're part of a remarkable family, we're all people who are deploring ourselves into circumstances to create things that we care about. So I really position this almost just more of a way to just sort of show a, show a really relevant definition of leadership these days. So. The question for all of us is which self is showing up and that's the work that all of us do. So with all that, Doug, I'm going to hand it back to you for the next activity. Awesome. So you guys are all familiar with our leadership circle, Matt. I'm sure most of you um, have probably seen or experienced the virtual Matt. Uh, we've been sharing it over the past six months or however long we've had it. Um, I just want to briefly go through it today to uh, make sure that we answer any questions that you may all have. It is, it's not that technical, but it's just a little funky. Um, let me go ahead and share the, where it is on the web. Um, so this is the link that you will all see, like when you go to the main mat, you can find this in TLC Go. Um, I can throw it in the chat function right now too, if you'd like. Um, just so you can copy it down and keep it on hand. Let me do that. This is also 
me going back and forth and taking forever. This is why you should have a tech facilitator who's not also trying to actually talk on the meeting at the same time. Um, anyways, uh, that's the main Google Mat. You'll notice we have the big red stop signs everywhere. That's because we don't want anybody actually using this version of the mat because everybody is using this version of the mat. So it's really easy. It tells you right here, go to file, make a copy, entire presentation. File, make a copy, entire presentation. You'll create your own copy that then you can create multiple copies of for as long as you like um, for the rest of your coaching lives. Uh, I made a copy today for us already and I went ahead and deleted all of the red stop signs because clearly we want to be able to use it. Um, just very quickly, we have this, you know, right up front, slide one is how to do, how to use the mat. And these instructions are very easy for your clients to understand as well. Uh, we have the video tutorial, which is 20 minutes of me talking at you. So good luck with that. Um, but if you want to watch it, you're welcome to. Uh, but we're going to just play around today. Um, and we have uh, Sky and Sharon and Judy were so kind to volunteer. And I'd like to invite anybody else who wants to jump on here as well with us today. So here's the link for today's mat. I should have wrote today's mat so you don't get confused. Top one is everybody's mat. Uh, bottom one is today's mat, and we're just going to be on slide two. Yeah, Wendy's going to uh, join. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, thanks, Wendy. So uh, one thing that you know, originally we just had all of these little avatars over here that you can click on and move around, and these are what you know we we usually ask people to write in their initials first and last. But we've actually found lately that it's really helpful to just go ahead and make that bigger if you you know you've only got five or ten people who are going to be on here and then you just write in your name so you just go in here oh what am i doing and i'm just going to put in doug so it's it's real easy to see this is me and you'll notice when i click on this um these little boxes come up now this is the one issue that literally everybody has so if you have an issue with this do not feel bad because everybody has it if you're trying to move your avatar and you click on it once and you've got the boxes, if you click on a box, you're going to see I can make a monster upside down version of myself, right? I don't really want to do that. So if I click on it once and it's highlighted with the little boxes around, we've really found the best way to move is to use the arrow keys and you can walk around just like you would be walking on the actual mat. And the other thing that does is if, Whoa, where did I go? You know, if Sharon, thanks Sharon, uh, Sharon's good at this. Um, if she clicks and drags it with her mouse, you know, from up here by virtual mat and then say she was going down into the complying or something like that, she would ma magically Harry Potter move down to the complying and we wouldn't understand, you know, where did Sharon go? Oh, now she's in complying. But if you're using that walk around, then it's really easy to see Oh, you know, Doug's moving from his authenticity down into his protecting, which is where I like to go a lot. Just like in um, real life, <laughs> you know, the movement. It's all about the movement, yep. So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's really the hardest part about the mat. Once you get down that movement uh, and being able to rename yourself, the other issue that people always have is they click on the center and then they're trying to move it, but they're only moving their cursor around inside. Happens literally all the time. And uh, it, this may seem like just very easy. You know, you, got, you guys are all on here and doing a great job moving around, uh, but you will have on average, you know, 30% of your participants who will not be able to move their, uh, their little avatar around for whatever reason. And that's another great thing that we uh, use the tech facilitator for. We were just on uh, the CLA certification the other day and we had a couple people who just, you know, for whatever reason, I think their screen was too small or something. They just couldn't do that. So I would move them around for them as tech facilitator. Just made life a little bit easier. Um, the only other really kind of fun thing is this little red bar over here. Uh, this makes, you can do some fun stuff with this. So. You all probably remember possibly being on the mat or even teaching it yourself like these tension exercises. 
Uh, the interesting thing with the virtual mat is you can clone yourself. So I'll just copy and paste a version of myself. Uh, you can also go up to file, copy, where is it now? It'd be edit, copy and paste, um, if that's easier. So now I have two versions of myself. Um, and you can actually use this little rubber band. And if you move around, what, if you click on one of the blue dots on it, you can move to one of your blue dots on yourselves and one of the other blue dot or purple dots on your other self. And then if I start moving around my creative half, you'll notice that uh, that tension band uh, kind of shows, you know, the tension that you're wanting to, to use. But yeah, you can copy, you can have as many tension bands on there as you want. Um, Mike, did you want to talk about to illustrate? I'm going to uh, use you and maybe one or two other volunteers just to illustrate a uh, common activity. Doug, if you think about a reactive tendency that has been triggered uh, more than typical lately, if you please place your, your avatar in that reactive tendency. Sure. I'm gonna go to my pleasing, which is where I really show up all the time. Now I'll ask everybody else to do the same thing. Those of you that are here, the five or seven of you, we won't get a, a conversation with everybody, but if everybody just sort of place their avatar in the reactive tendency that they're seeing is showing up more readily these days. Sharon, we have you over there in the driven. Judy, we have you, is that ambition? Will you're over there and pleasing. Wendy, you're passive, okay. And so just like on a real mad activity, we would have a conversation about what does it look like? What does it feel like? What's happening there? Uh, you know, we, we won't do it here, but you, you, you can understand the illustration of it, right? And then what you do is you ask people to cut and paste, like Doug just did, copy a second version of yourself. Doug, if you would just illustrate that again. And if you would, go to the creative place that you're called to as an alternative to this pleasing that's been so easily triggered lately. Yeah, I'm going to come up here into a uh, strategic focus, purposeful and visionary, kind of straddle that line. Would you mind just uh, creating that rubber band so we can uh, uh, show the creative tension, illustrate it? Absolutely, and I accidentally deleted it, so I'm going to go grab it off of this slide. And then if we have everybody grabbing the rubber bands, we won't do that, but just to illustrate the point, what we then have everybody do is, is illustrating on the virtual mat the shift from the reactive place that comes so organically to the creative place that is the more scalable, the more intentional, the place I want to go on purpose. And then you have a dialogue with everybody about that shift and what's, what's included. So that's essentially what the activity is all about. Uh, and I, I hope that so, most of us can, uh, can imagine that. It's an illustration of the same thing you would do in a physical environment. But as you see it populating and growing, it's pretty fascinating how all of this is the creative tension at work. So Doug, before we open up to questions, uh, any other closing thoughts on the virtual mat? You know, the only last thing, um, you'll notice it, people have a real hard time reading the uh, dimensions, which unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is right now. And on future versions of the map, we're looking to uh, design it a little better for that. Um, but a lot of times we'll just, you know, if you're only going to be working in the creative or the reactive, we have full half versions of both of those, make it easy. We also have just the inner circle. Uh, we have uh, the manager and the uh, CLA versions, the collective leadership. Uh, the other thing is you can copy these slides out and you can actually, if you have a group report, you can swap out the background. These are just background images. You can put, you know, your team's group report on here and have them walk around their individual group report or even their own report if you really wanted to. So uh, sky's the limit with this. It's open platform. So do with it what you will. 
So if there's anybody who is interested in facilitating with the virtual mat, reach out to Doug or me and we will kind of get you with the instructor materials, all the setup, a little bit of practice helps beforehand just to kind of try it out. We'd be glad to practice with you. But uh, we've been hearing very positive feedback for it. One thing that I've learned is I will use this if I'm going to spend more than 10 to 20 minutes in mad activities. It's worth the setup. If I'm just doing a very simple quick hit, you know, five or seven minute learning point, I will instead just talk about it more conceptually. So that's, that's the best practice that I've found worthwhile. Like there's a question from Sharon about what is the virtual map uh, maps reside? Where can we get them from? Doug? Yes, it's just on the, uh, it's just at this link. It's a Google Doc link. Let me post it one more time in the chat. And again, please do make a copy of it for yourself. And then once you have your own copy, I'd suggest making individual copies for every time you use it. You can kind of just keep that master file. Uh, if you forget the link, uh, it's right inside of TLC Go. You're also welcome to contact the, uh, our customer service team, they have the link, happy to give it to you anytime. For Deidre and Vinay, when you used it with your government client, you mentioned mailing them a tabletop version of the mat. Did you go back and forth with the virtual and the physical map? Or did you? For that particular meeting, we didn't use the virtual one because it was exactly what Mike was saying. We wanted it to be pre-work for them and also a, more of a quick exercise during their breakouts. And we wanted, they were off on breakouts by themselves with no supervision. And so we didn't want to use the virtual one for that. So we just used the tabletop ones for that one. What we did do is ask them to spend some time with the pre-works guy. So we said, oh, get your profiles and stand on the reactive uh, tendencies, stand on the creative competencies and we'll see what it feels like and, and also experience shifting from say reactive to creative. What does that feel like? So we give them experience that way. Yeah, so it's an individual experience rather than a collective experience. Yeah, I can definitely see the power in that, especially just to energetically have that experience. You don't quite get that sticking your avatar right on the virtual version. Yeah, that's right. So we're gonna swing to a, um, a close with, uh, Doug, thank you for reposting that link. Uh, before we do that, I just want to very quickly, Doug, if you'd move to the debrief process and get us back on the slides. I'm going to very, very quickly just highlight a few other things that I just want to share just if time permitted. Here's a, an example of a mad activity. Oh, sorry. Okay, go, that's fine. Um, I offer, offered a couple of different find your, I'm sorry, uh, mad activities that are useful virtually or otherwise. So those are included in this deck for you. If you continue on, one more. Uh, you might have seen, uh, you know the debrief steps. I want to let you know, there is a new dialogue going on with step four about the life stories. Uh, we're actually making a shift and uh, it's not illustrated here, but I want to just talk about it conceptually. I've used it only twice and I liked how it went. Instead of it being a life story review, we're calling it your leadership journey. And we're doing the same thing, but we're asking the questions in the opposite way. So as simply put, you know, just before we get into the details of a report, just tell me a little bit about things that have shaped your leadership journey, you know, starting with the, you know, the last couple of years, and then maybe a little further back, and then maybe even further back into the early formative years. So that's one shift I might encourage you to try. It worked really well. Next one slide, please. And I'm throwing these really quickly. This is Doug and his team just uh, kind of putting a little levity. And if you just look at the middle of that box there, Just trying to create a little levity around, you know, how the reactive tendencies can kind of slow us down and then you turn that into a learning point. Uh, next one, Doug. Many of you have seen this in certification, but it brings some humor. <laughs> and then two more very quickly. One of the things we're trying, one more, uh, one of the things we're trying to do is help people appreciate uh, it's not about making the reactive go away, but rather just pull from it that which is uh, a value and using with intention. So we've got these little shift activities that aren't about minimizing the reactive, but instead repurposing them. So for example, a lot of us have the complying tendency and there's a new question there, I've highlighted it, to think about if you're gonna be complying or if that's your go-to, think about the impact of complying if you go two steps out 
like how will complying look if you're working with the senior leader in the group versus your typical audience? Or think about what complying might look like if you're going all the way out to a customer. And all of a sudden that just kind of shifts where you really do uh, pull the essence or the value or the gift uh, without some of the residual consequence of it. There's a next one uh, for the protecting. And the protecting is one who oftentimes feels like they have to know all the answers first and kind of bring that to the group. And this is an activity about discover the puzzle pieces where you're essentially assuming everybody in the room has one piece to the puzzle. And it's your job to first hear from everybody else before you pull it all together into the composite puzzle. So that's another shifting activity for the high protecting. And then for the controlling, we have this piece about just treading water like in a pool. Like give yourself the challenge of, of treading a little while longer before going in to take action or move forward or change the topic or answer the question. Just tread a little bit longer and create the space for another voice to come up. So those are all just available, just some new uh, shifting activities we've learned about. And with that, Doug, if we can turn off the uh, PowerPoint, let's just open it up. That concludes uh, what we have planned and we have a few minutes left. Curious, uh, what else anybody would like to share or what else would be useful in this conversation? I wanted to just say a special thanks to you, Mike and Douglas and, and DJ and Lee for pulling this together. <laughs> I have immediate application for a lot of what was covered today. So I'm deeply very grateful for this. Thank you. Thank you, Sky. Thank you. And Mike, one quick question. What's the intent of switching the order of the life story? Any learning there that you did that? Uh, it, was a, it was a hunch we're playing with something new uh there are people who get a little thrown off by you know early years like what childhood which is not exactly the question but we thought it might just kind of uh, more easily uh create natural flow if we first started with the more recent experience they're dealing with especially in a covid environment that's what started okay thank you that's all thank you for the question and i will take that back at 529 to say, um, and Vinay, join, join in with me. I lost you, Vinay. Oh yeah, I see you there. <laughs> um, say, to say a very big thank you to Mike and Doug for really helping us out today with this. It was great. I think, thank you, Jill, I, I can't remember who just said it. I think it was Sky that, you know, there's so many takeaways from here. So our, our uh, promise to you, we'll also make sure we get you the chat, which we don't normally send out, but there was just a ton of good information in the chat today. So we'll make sure that gets out to you along with the slides and along with um, the, the recording of today. Um, also, thank you to Lee Wierzynski, who, is our, who has been Vinay and I's technical support for a very long time. Um, she's, we were laughing. She actually does technical support for the ITL network, for the ICF Metro DC. So we're, we're small customers of Lee, but she is incredible and has keep, kept us on track for uh, several years. <laughs> so thank you, Lee. And if everybody wants to take yourself off mute, give everybody a hand and say goodbye. I think we'll call it a wrap. Hi, everybody. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mike. Thanks, Thank Scott. you. Bye. Great session. Thank Thanks. Amazing. Thanks, everyone. It was great. <laughs> so good to see everybody. Thanks for all the good work you do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. A lot of good work. Okay, Thank Lee, you. can you...